oh, okay. <laughs> it, and you want me to still be succinct in five. Uh, excluding foreign language and foreign travel, you know, number one, they want you to, and this is my opinion, this is not via CIA.gov, so please don't sue me. Uh, my opinion, one, they want you to be well-rounded. And by that, I mean to have the ability to speak on a wide variety of topics. You know, it's great if you're an expert in a particular field, but to be able to speak on a wide variety of subjects gives you the capability of relating to the individual that you're speaking to. Uh, so, you know, trying to experience as much as you can, and I know that sounds so generic even hearing myself say it, but not just focusing on what you're good at, but coming out of your comfort zone, and especially if you're in a foreign country, starting to participate in what is popular there and learning what you know locals do and wherever you reside, getting to know the people in that area. And what that allows you to do is whether you're in the doctor's office or you're at a high-end lounge or the you know pub on the dock, you're able to communicate with the other people there and relate to them. You know, because if you're coming in as the rocket scientist and you want to talk to the guys on the dock about rocket science, you're not going to get very far. But if you're able to hang up that white lab coat and head down to the dock and communicate with people there as well as people in the doctor's office, then, you know, that's everything. So being as well-rounded in your education is extremely critical. So I guess if a lot of my comments on Reddit come from people in college such as yourself, and uh, it ranges the gamut from top Ivy League universities to state universities to, to everything in between, um, and people self-identify and tell me exactly where they're from, what courses they're taking, and yeah, so my advice, aside from the foreign language and foreign travel, if I have to <laughs> number them, number one would be to be as well-rounded uh, in your knowledge uh, as, as possible. So read. <laughs> read a lot. Read everything. Well, it probably sounds kind of obvious, but you have to be intelligent. And that, like what I said previously, with being well-rounded, your intelligence has to be well-rounded. You can't just be an expert in mathematics. Well, you could, and then you could go into an engineering track, possibly. But I just speak from my career path, which was case officer, operations officer. And so for me and for others who have done it, it is about being able to speak with you know people in a foreign language that you got to be fairly intelligent to be able to keep up and and understand what somebody's saying to you not in your native tongue and process that and they're giving you high value information so the ability to get all of that at once and it's coming at you as fast as you know we're speaking now so to process that and then at the same time you're translating it into English for yourself to make sure you comprehend what they're saying and then the ability to come back to wherever you're staying and eventually you're going to have to write all that up so you know you know you have to know how to write well also so I guess that's number three <laughs> you know you have to be a good writer if you're going to do field work you have to write well you really do because some of your products that you're putting out are going to the highest levels and can go to the President of the United States when you have this job. You know, so what you're collecting in the field, depending on where you are, could be so mission critical that it's making the President's daily brief. So you know, being well-rounded in your education, being intelligent, and being 
an excellent writer to the extent that you can, that kind of all goes with, you know, learning and, and being at a university, especially as prestigious as yours, and taking advantage of that to the fullest. Yeah, well, that's, that's just it. That's a great point. You know, the first three really have to do a lot with education and making yourself more intelligent and having a variety of knowledge. The fourth thing I would say is, and it seems so obvious considering it's a central intelligence agency and you're going to be handling your nation's top secrets if you are in fact a case officer or operations officer and you're in the field collecting secrets, stealing secrets from foreign countries. That is what we do and people forget about it. But for number four, I'd say uh, is integrity, meaning that your colleagues, your superiors, People that work for you, they have to believe in you and they have to trust you. And if they don't trust you, that's the end of the line. And you have to be able to trust them or there's no mission, there's no operation, there's nothing. So you have to know that when that person leaves and comes back and says that X, Y, Z happened, then it happened. And if they say it didn't happen, then it didn't happen because the nature of espionage is singular. You're a lone wolf. And, you know, a lot of people don't readily understand that, I feel, or want to believe that. But the reality of the, the work itself in the field is it's you and it's your asset or the individual with the information. And you're responsible for their safety. You're responsible for obtaining the information that they have and reporting it not just accurately but honestly and keep in mind that's often in a foreign language so if you forgot the word or didn't understand what they said are you just going to flub that and make something up what you think they said because that's going into official government traffic it's really important that you get it right and if you didn't you have to admit that mistake and that sucks uh, let me tell you. But again, you know, that goes back to intelligence. That goes back to being able to process in a foreign language. That's why it's important. And I know you are taking a foreign language, but it's important to really lock that down now and become as proficient as you can. Because it's really hard when you're talking about difficult, high-level topics in a foreign language. And they're scared and they're speaking really fast. And you have to be on their level and you have to be at those RPMs to process that. And so, you know, it's very difficult. Yeah. So, yeah. Ah, yeah. So, five. Well, you have to be brave. And with that, though, not cavalier, not cowboy and stupid. Basically, whatever you see in the movies or on television about the CIA agents being these maniac cowboys, you do have to be brave. And that, again, is something that is just assumed. But when your feet are to the fire, you have to know that you have the reserves, that you have the capability to do it, you trust your training, and you do do it. Because a lot of places in the world are scary. And there's a lot of bad people, unfortunately, who do want to do you harm, especially do you harm, do me harm. Like, that's a huge win. Capture an intelligence officer, the CIA, responsible for all the world's problems, some people think. Some don't. Somebody, somebody will clip that out and make a, <laughs> a meme or something out of that and have me just repeating that, I'm sure. <laughs> Whoops. But yeah, you have to be brave and you have to know what a smart risk is and what an unnecessary risk is and too much risk. And it's a fine line. A lot of times, especially if you're in a war zone and especially if everything's collapsing around you 
and things are moving at light speed and you have to be able to think at that speed and you have to be extemporaneous because you don't know what's going to happen next we're talking about humans after all and this person may do the same thing every single day from 9 to 5 but at 2 p.m. this day their spouse got hit by a car and they're coming to meet you to share secrets with you and they're a mess well what happened to that person who was always in control they're not in control now so the sands can shift rapidly and you have to be able to deal with that and at the same time you know i say number five is bravery it goes in accordance with the first four you you take all of those to make your decision on how to execute the mission how to perform and yeah i think they all gel together nicely but don't forget that i said that was excluding if if you're coming out of high school or college and you want to get into the caa here's here's the bottom line which i guess i should have put at top <laughs> uh learn a foreign language travel overseas experience other cultures read as much as you can even if you're reading like you don't have to be reading non-fiction uh, legacy of ashes and you know the billion dollar spy and triple agent and all these cia books i heard left to boom is pretty good <laughs> but you don't need to be reading those because you're not going to I mean, it's okay to read those, and it's good to read those, so you know what you're getting into to a degree. But at the same time, that's not what you're going to be talking about with the person you're trying to pursue to get information from. Uh, things that they don't care about, they make that pretty clear. They want to see a 3.0 GPA, and really anything after that, I know I'll probably get myself in trouble here, but they don't care. If you have a 3.0, that's enough. You know, again, they want to see your character. They want to see that you're well-rounded. They want to see that you're intelligent. If you have a 4.0 and a 1600 SAT and you are a rocket scientist, let's say again, and you can build rockets, well, that's great, but you're going to be relegated to this corner over here because that's all you know and that's all you do you're not going to go be a case officer. So uh, GPA, and because it's a specific degree, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. They really don't care anything that you did in high school, your extracurriculars. That helps you to get into college. After that, no one cares that you were a Boy Scout. Sorry, <laughs> they don't. Uh, I couldn't tie a knot other than a shoelace to save my life, if that's any perspective. I have no badges. Whoops, I like Thin Mints from Girl Scouts, that's about it. <laughs> uh, other than that, um, you know, they the extracurricular sports, they don't care that you were the captain of the football team in high school or college. Probably even not a good thing if you were in college because you're going to have a hard time having an alias and living under alias since people may have watched you play on TV. So, sorry. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, just, you're going to start at the same line as everyone else. It's the same starting line, same starting point. So, you know, I hear, well, I get a lot of AMA messages from folks who say, well, I have a degree in intelligence and I have a degree in, you know, foreign affairs, or I have this master's in this, and I went to this specific college. I'm sure you've heard of it. We have a degree in you know intelligence operations and i'm just going that's fine and you might understand some acronyms and pick those up a little faster than your counterpart but at the end of the day when you walk into headquarters on the first day of your career and you're going into a field court like you're going in to be a field operative a case officer an ops officer you're starting all at the same level regardless of your age your race your gender it doesn't matter. And that's a great thing. That's how I got in and that's how, you know, I got to where I was uh, while I was doing it and was able to have some success in the field. It's 
because there was no preparation for it. You will become what they want you to be. And that's actually a really good thing uh, in this instance. Yes, you can bring in your own personality, but at the end of the day, you do have to fit a particular mold because you are still within the bounds of intelligence officer. So take that for what it's worth. <laughs> Final remarks, yeah. Uh, there's just no back door. There's not. There's no back door to getting in an agency. You can't be a legacy. You can't buy your way in. Uh, it doesn't matter where you went to school or what you did in a past life, as long as you didn't break the law. But it doesn't matter. You're all going to start at the same point if you're going into field operations. And that's great. Uh, but yeah, there's just no back door. And ultimately, I'm just thankful for the experience. You know, I'm grateful to the CIA. People can take that for what it's worth. I say that in almost every presentation I give. And, you know, trolls on the internet like to say that I'm stumping for the CIA. That's completely untrue and couldn't be further from the truth if you see, you know, they're, the agency writ large is not a big fan of mine. And they usually aren't of people who write a book or uh, go out in public. And that's understood. But, yeah, uh... There's just, there's no back door to the agency. There's not. A lot of people think there is and that they're a legacy or because of the university they went to, they stand a better chance to get in and that's absolutely not the case. I can assure you that I am a walking example of that. Trust me, it does not matter from what walk of life you come from, whether it's downtown Manhattan South Beach, rural cornfield Midwest, Texas on the border, Seattle, Washington, Portland, Oregon. <laughs> Sound like a rapper calling out cities that I'm fond of. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you want to do it, if you want to serve your country, if you're compelled to do it and you think this is a good fit, apply. That's all I can say. Give it a shot. What have you got to lose?